I'm Dirk Nacosta, guest host on BizTalk, and I'd like to introduce you to our latest guest, Ren, and uh, welcome to the show, Ren. Thank you. And uh, Ren, I, uh, we've known each other for a while, and uh, you've got a very interesting background and a very interesting um, business model, and uh, it'd be great to share some of that detail with the audience, but first of all, tell us a little bit about your story, how you got to be where you are, you know, with the school, and we'll go from there. Sure. So if I start my journey when I started from America, uh, I call myself Atlantic City Boy because uh, August 13, 2000, I came to America, uh, straight to Atlantic City. I used to live in a Regency next to Showboat, now next to Ocean. Uh, I was 22 year old, undocumented, uh, couldn't speak English with less than $100 in my pocket. And uh, I always say that any immigrant come to US with the American dream, uh, I'm living one. And uh, I always tell to all the students that I work with is, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So it's a 23 year journey in America and I'm back in Atlantic City. So super excited. So that is inspiring in, a, in many different ways. But how did you, go from being pe more or less penniless, Atlantic, uh, you know, $100 in your pocket, coming to Atlantic City. How did you take that situation and turn it into what we see today? And we'll talk about what you, um, uh, your business and how that works, but how did you transition into something that you feel is, you know? So uh, I usually say that's not only my story, it's every immigrant story is we're hungry. We're hungry for opportunity, we're hungry for work, and uh, we'd never look back. So opportunity arises, you put your work in. And uh, uh, America is the only country that provides opportunity to everyone who's hungry. So I'm glad that I end up in America. Right. Um, so t talk, talk us through how you seized or you saw an opportunity to start a, an education business what was that moment where you decided you know that is an opportunity that I can so uh, I always call myself I'm an educator from uh, fifth grader I started my first computer Institute when I was in India and I was in 11th grade those days was before Windows so DOS WordStar Lotus all the people uh, from that era probably remember uh, Windows was just invented mm -hmm. and I used to teach uh, Those uh, computer software uh, In Indian language because I couldn't speak English those days. So we I used to uh, buy that computer magazine uh, translated from English to local regional language called Gujarati and uh, uh, teach people uh, computers so when a few friends uh, who were uh, in America came, they were Stockton graduates actually, and came to visit India after graduating and they goes like, Randy, what are you doing here in India? You have a lot more opportunity in a US. And I found one uh, human trafficker who got me in to the country. Uh, I paid 1.1 million rupees. That's approximately $25,000 in those days uh, to those traffickers to land in Atlantic City. And I saw that uh, okay one dollar was 45 uh, those days today one dollar is 83 and uh, i started working third day uh, landing in atlantic city i took a job in a ocean one mall uh, right behind the caesars now is okay. the pier and uh, it was three dollar an hour job for cash and i used to live in regency so i remember those days jitney was 50 cents mm -hmm. uh, one way and I couldn't afford with the three dollar an hour job, so I used right. to walk on a boardwalk. Uh, it takes me hour to go to work, hour to come back, and I did a twelve hour shift. So from uh, those struggling days to I found my wife. Uh, she's a high, Atlantic City High School graduate, Atlantic Cape Community College graduate, uh, and through the marriage, I got a green card and I started working. Those right after the year the nine eleven happened and my hope and dream to get back into the IT mm -hmm. was shattered. So I got stuck uh, working in Atlantic City casinos. So 
first legal job in a country was Wild Wild West Casino those days, security mm. officer, $8.25. Mm. <laughs> and uh, from there, I can say I did almost every single job casino has to offer from housekeeping to limo driving to cashier, cashier supervisor, uh, uh, slot attendant, poker dealer, almost every job casino has to offer I did uh, until uh, I was uh, tired enough to say enough is enough. Uh, let me get back to the, uh, the things that I know and I moved out of a South Jersey and uh, got into the IT. Mm -hmm. So 2008 I moved out and was doing IT uh, and running some jewelry uh, shows and a business and then 2014-15 when casino started closing quite a few people called me and says Ren you're in IT why don't you do IT training in a South Jersey uh, and it's a good industry because a lot of people particularly a lot of Indian Americans are uh, unemployed so I came back and I did a training for 14 uh, Indian American in an IT and I was able to place every single one in a hundred thousand dollar plus job and I'm like this is a good business I want to start a training institute so I applied it took us eight nine months and uh, I had a, a Ideal Institute of Technology started licensed uh, private vocational school in 2016. Incredible. So you put in a lot of work to I basically eventually identify something you were passionate about, which then catapulted you to what you have today. So tell, tell us a little bit about the Ideal Institute. So, uh, I have to share this way that American education system always bothered me because my wife, uh, she graduated from Atlantic Cape Community College and she is graduated from Penn State. She's an occupational therapist. But somehow education is unaffordable in America. And uh, when I started Ideal Institute of Technology, I thought I'm going to train everybody in IT and get everybody a job. And I quickly learned nobody want to pay for education in america we always need a funding mm. and that was the biggest uh, uh challenge for me and somebody guided me that oh that is a youth program grant out there you apply now uh, i applied for a first out of school youth grant in 2016 so i was in a country almost 16 years uh, and had no clue that we have this many number of people can't read, hmm. don't have a high school diploma, and they have a label called at-risk youth. I always say that changed my life because it's beyond my understanding that we are in America and we have somebody who don't have a high school diploma or somebody can't read and somebody is justice involved, somebody have a mental health issue and somebody have a substance abuse issue. And government is keep spending money, millions and millions of dollars. And when I received my first grant, the grant says we pay $50 a week stipend, provide a bus pass, and teach for free. I thought I'm going to have uh, hundreds of thousands of people in a line interested, and I couldn't find a single soul. Hmm. So American education system, I see a challenge, and I saw an opportunity. So we started dreaming, and now I can say it's not a dream anymore, it's a reality, to be the first of its kind education institute that pays students to come to school. Hmm. So now uh, we're living and breathing. You enroll at Ideal Institute of Technology, we're paying you. Yeah, I mean, this is a very unique, I've never seen it before, model of education, where you're paying people you're giving them the skills that are practical so they can go and be productive in the workforce, right? Academia is one thing. You can learn all the book smarts you can, but does it prepare you for the real world? Maybe, maybe not. What It does in a lot of cases, but your model is very much about getting the individual prepared for work. Yeah, that's, and that's like, a big difference. I usually say this out loud to everyone that I meet who's in education 
that we always use this term loosely, that education is our fundamental right. Education is our fundamental right. But then the community that I serve, right, I usually call labeled community, right? Whether you are a young or you're an adult, if you are labeled, say, you're at risk, you're a high school dropout, uh, you're uh, welfare dependent, you're on a public assistant, you're a food stamp recipient, you're justice involved. We have like a hundred thousand different label that we give to the people. So I always say, if you're having that label, you might not know how to exercise your right. So you have a fundamental right as an education, but how to exercise it, you don't know. So I started advocating and pitching that if you are from label community, getting education uh, is a job. But then I always add that if you go to job, what happens? You get paid. Mm -hmm. So we created our programs, all our program at Ideal Institute of Technology is work-based learning. Mm -hmm. So our program model is you come to Ideal 40 hours a week, just like you come to job, uh, 15 to 20 hours is a classroom training and 20 to 25 hours is on the job training. And we do that through a network of our social enterprise, which is our student run enterprise. So it's a very interesting model because of that component. You're learning for a portion of the day and you're actually working for a large part of the day. And that portion when they're working, you're actually selling services, I believe, to local business, local companies. So they're getting hands on real experience, but the, the school is, is selling the services. Is that correct? Is yeah. That, yeah. So we sell our services. And uh, the reason that I do that is uh, our school is a not for profit, but we never fundraise. Uh, we always work raise. So we go out to the community, small business or big corporates and say that you wanted to help today's youth whether they are labeled or whether they are elite. If you wanted to help them, don't give them $100 donation or $5,000 donation or $10,000 donation and wash your hand, uh, but get involved and provide them an opportunity. So we seek an opportunity for our student. Giving an example, we teach Apple certified tech program. So that means we teach uh, cell phone repair, computer repair, surveillance installation, but we run Ideal Tech Center. So, uh, if you have a need that you need to repair your computer or you want to manage IT service, you can contract our social enterprise ideal tech center and our student mm -hmm. and our instructor will serve that contract. You need an iPhone app development, you need a web development, you can give us a contract and we'll develop an app for you. And in that process, student will learn and earn at the same time. So from cell phone repair being our first social enterprise, now uh, our slogan is we do what we teach. Mm. So if we teach IT, we have a software and hardware IT company. We teach construction. We are a licensed, bonded, insured construction company. We are about to be a union signatory construction company uh, with the apprenticeship program. Uh, we have an advanced manufacturing, woodworking factory. Uh, we also have a film production and a music production studio. And we run our own e-commerce store on Amazon, Walmart, and eBay. So... Uh, Every single program that we teach, we provide paid work experience opportunity to our student. And that's what I love about your model. It's, I've never seen it before. It's totally unique in, in that regard, <clears throat> that your students are prepared for the real world. And tell me about the, should we say, the, the rate at which they're employed afterward. I mean, are, are employers more likely to hire people from ideal because they have had real world experience? Yeah, absolutely. So most of our social enterprise does B2B service. So we're not competing a local businesses, but we work and provide services to the businesses. And that's the best place for our students to get a job. So if we are providing you a graphic design service and our students are involved, the employer or a client most likely to hire those students in the future. And nowadays, now uh, we're getting a lot more interest from the local business. So providing the externship paid work experience to our student. Um, so a lot of time our students don't even have to work for our social enterprise. They get a placement hours through the local businesses. Fantastic.
So I've actually had a tour of your new facility. Very impressive, beautifully uh, reconstructed uh, building. Um, but I also happen to know there's some incredible success stories that came out. Could you share any of those success stories? Is there anything that comes to mind that you want? So want giving to an example, the last success story we had was a... Uh, 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 we were serving Department of Corrections grant called NJ Lead, and we trained two brothers on start your own food truck program. Now uh, they are graduated with the ownership, both brother, they own a food truck, and they're about to do the restaurant of their own. So we're the first and only entrepreneurship program where students can graduate with their own business in operation. Fantastic. So, Ren. That, I think, was an incredible discussion about your unique business model. I've never seen it before. I'm impressed. You know, I've seen some of the work you're doing, and uh, it's incredible. So we appreciate you coming on the show um, and maybe future updates. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.